For us petrol heads, it's always great when a racing team decides to make an epic supercar. Starting with Ferrari, they started as a racing team before they merged into full road car production, and more recently, McLaren has gone on to make an extremely successful automotive arm. Now, there's a new kid on the block, and it's got 70 years of racing heritage behind it. Meet the Brabham BT62. Jack Brabham is a name synonymous with the glory days of Formula One. The Australian legend began racing in F1 over 60 years ago now and went on to win 35 Grand Prix and 4 F1 World Championships. The biggest achievement of Brabham was the fact that Jack took the 1966 title while driving a car of his own making, the first and only time that feat has ever been achieved. Now, Jack's son David, an F1 driver and multiple Le Mans winner himself, has brought the Brabham name back through this million pound track only hypercar. Well, when we sort of put down the brief of what kind of car this, this could be, uh, it was based off a lot of my experience having driven so many different types of vehicles, uh, from single seaters to GT cars to prototypes, uh, touring cars, you name it, I, I've driven a lot. And this car kind of sits in between a GT car and a prototype. So it's a, a GT car unrestricted. Well, the, the car's design is really a combination of that function and form, function for the racetrack and form with road car aesthetics. So when you look at the car, it looks like a race car, but it has that road car feel about it as well. And we want to be able to move this project into the future where eventually we go on the road, but also onto the racetrack in competition. With the Brabham BT62 being a newbie to the hypercar game, you may not have it up there with the AMG Project 1s or Aston Martin Valkyries of this world, but this car claims some serious clout along with its colossal price tag. Let's start with the powertrain. It's a 5.4 litre naturally aspirated V8. There's no turbochargers in this engine bay. Brabham says that it's taken this engine and tinkered with it from another manufacturer. Now let's put those clues together. Over five litres of displacement, a flat plane crank. Where do you think this engine's from? Let's start it up and see if that helps. Those figures are around 180 brake horsepower and 60 pounds feet higher than the Ford V8, which is already a highly strong engine. But anyway, post down in the comments below where you think this engine originates from. Looking at the BT62, I personally see a bit of Lotus Evora, a bit of Ferrari 488, and maybe even a bit of Gallardo. The livery you see the car in right now is the livery from the BT19 F1 car that Jack Brabham drove to the 1966 F1 World Championship. But all of the car's divots and shapes all have aerodynamic jobs to do. The bodywork of the car is lightweight carbon fibre, meaning that it comes in at just 972 kilograms dry, about the same as a new Suzuki Swift. But it's what Brabham has done with that carbon fibre that takes the BT62 into the realm of hypercars. Thanks to a carbon fibre front splitter, carbon fibre aero blades and front canards, a carbon fibre floor and barge boards, a carbon fibre dual element rear wing, and a carbon fibre rear diffuser. The Brabham creates over 1,200 kilograms of downforce once the air is coursing over all of those aerodynamic trinkets. Now, diving into the world of physics, 1,200 kilograms of downforce and just 972 kilograms of mass means that the BT-62 can theoretically drive upside down in a tunnel. That's because downforce doesn't care what direction it's acting in. As long as you provide the airflow, it will push you into whatever surface you're in contact with. Now we've heard claims like this from Formula One before, but let us explain why the driving upside down myth is actually a load of bollocks. Well, it mostly comes down to the mechanical bits. Firstly, there's the issue of oil starvation. Engines are designed to pick up oil at its lowest point, 
using a pump to circulate it up and around the block. Once inverted, the oil would naturally try to slosh upwards into the operating engine, leaving one end of the engine poorly lubricated and potentially flooding the pistons to the point of hydrolocking. Yes, Brabham could develop an engine specifically to conquer the art of driving the BT-62 upside down, but let's just say it's not a priority right now. Brabham is looking to take the car racing, with David eyeing up a victory at Le Mans. There's been no word of a road car... yet. It joins the likes of the McLaren Senna GTR, the Aston Martin Valkyrie AMR Pro, and the AMG Project 1 in the track-focused hypercar sector, but we'll need to wait and see as to whether it can hold its own in that company. The Brabham is about 100 brake horsepower down on the McLaren, and it will look to be about 300 down on the Merc and the Aston. So Brabham will have to maximise outright grip and downforce creation to set those blistering lap times. Once you're in the BT62, you can really see where that million quid plus taxes is going. There's literally carbon fibre everywhere in the doors, all over the dash, the steering wheel, absolutely everything is bare carbon fibre. And then the real race car stuff starts to come out. This steering wheel, it makes me feel like I'm in an LMP1 car. Dave has described the car as sort of between a GT racer and a Le Mans prototype and you can definitely see in here. These racing buckets, they're more like racing basins. You literally disappear into them. They are absolutely massive. I'm guessing you get completely tailor-made for these. And if you close in here, the paddles on the back of the steering wheel are pneumatic. Listen to that. That will be so satisfying when you're hammering around the racetrack. It is quite remarkable what Brabham has achieved in two years of development in a game that requires the top end of engineering expertise in absolutely every aspect. I'll admit that I don't think it's the prettiest of cars, but much like the McLaren Senna, it just screams functionality. It may also not have any racing under its belt just yet, but with that powertrain, that much downforce and that name, we reckon a trip to the Circuit de la Sarthe isn't far away.